In fact, um, I was not happy to, to be in IPS, in the Indian Police Service, when I was offered. My desire was to be rather in the foreign service because I thought by being in foreign service, I'll be able to see countries and make friends all over the world, but that didn't happen. So when I was given the Indian Police Service, I took it with, um, what should I say, a kind of feeling that, well, I'll take it as a stepping stone. Well, in the IPS, I'll write again for uh, foreign service, etc., which I did. I was called to the uh, EPC up to interview, personal interview. But since I was uh, busy w with my training, uh, I could not get more than I got the previous in the previous exam. So again, I was not given the IPS. I'm sorry, in, uh, IFS. But one day I said to myself. Well, whatever it is, probably I need to accept this offer. However, I'll, I'll um, uh, appear before God and consult with him and uh, ask him for help so that I'll be uh, successful in my profession. So one day I went to the church and stood in front of the pulpit. I don't know if you know the pulpit. And I stood in front of the pulpit in my uni full uniform as IPS trainee and then I said to God, God I have come here to give you my humble salute. So I gave him the best salute I could execute as a trainee, six month trainee IPS officer. So I said, God, I am here in, I in, in the police profession which I never like. However, if you want me to be here, I will be there provided you would be with me wherever I go wherever I would be posted, so that I'll be able to glorify your name and I'll be able to be recognized as a, a good police officer. And uh, people will, will see that uh, uh, I am welcome, etc. So my short prayer was answered uh, t t during my 36 long year uh, profession, in which I as I said in the beginning, I married this profession, police profession, really. And uh, from day one, I took all my responsibilities seriously. And all these your uh, red letter days in calendars, I never utilized them. I will work on Sundays, I'll work on red letter days. I never had time even to spend with my children, my wife. My wife used to rightfully uh, complain saying that I never took them <coughs> to picture or picnic spots or parks and all that. So now, um, I, my dedication to the people uh, in that every time when I'll be transferred to a new district, in fact I did as many as six districts in Karnataka State as Supernova Police, where if people forgive me if I brag about myself a little bit, I was considered to be a troubleshooter. Uh, I cannot name all of them. But wherever I work, uh, I work dedicatedly. Um, that's why the people of Karnataka knew me uh, as police officer, and they have met three, three full-length feats of films. My dedication was so much that every time I took up a new district, the first statement I would make to the public, to the press was, I will be always available and there will be no, no meal time, no sleeping time, no puja time um, for my accessibility or availability. Everybody, anyone in, in need of police help can come and see me or call me up anytime during 24 hours. So saying I used to put my phone next to my pillow, which I still do now also. At this age, when I've come to 60... 66. Uh, I still say that I am available 24 hours for people who need me. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm glad you asked me this question. Corruption was the first enemy I had when I entered the, civil, the service. I have seen people, even right constabulary level people, um, indulging in corruption. 
as uh, assistant SP in the districts, what I used to do was whenever I heard corruption being indulged into by any one of my uh, subordinates, either a constable, head constable, sub-inspector, inspector, I'll call them to my office, close all the doors and windows, and uh, used to ask them if, if that information I got was correct. Everyone, without any exception, admitted that what I had heard about their corruption was right. Sorry to say that, of course, it was what had, what had happened 40 years ago. Even if they tried to prosecute me, uh, nothing much could be done. I used to close the doors and windows, and I used to beat them up. Yeah. I used to tell them, look, this is what you have been doing, you stop it. You are paid. You are meant to serve people. And ultimately they will say, I'm sorry sir, forgive me. I said, okay, I'll forgive you this time. Never do it again. I'll not punish you, I'll not spoil your uh, career or your service record because of this. Provided you will stop it, you will never do it again. They will always promise me that they'll never do it again. And also I'll say, I'm not going to take serious action this time against you. I could have dismissed you, etc. But I'll not do because of your wife, because of your children. Then they'll say, thank you, sir. These people whom I had rough up never complained against me. Rather, they loved me and they knew that I cared for them and I want the department to be okay. So corruption was the the first thing I, I fought when I entered into the service. Well, if corruption, how hard, however hard you fought, I found <coughs> could never be really eliminated completely. You can only reduce it or minimize it. But that too, if all of us at the supervisory level are not of the same uh, kind of attitude or are, are not equally interested in suppressing corruption in any department, in any activity of life or business of life, it is going to remain always. Therefore, today I consider corruption is the biggest uh, disease we have in the, we suffer in this country. It's like, a, it's like a big cancer. And I don't know how many of us are willing to say, I will continue to fight against corruption, I'll oppose corruption and corrupt people, and I'll take every possible action against corrupt people or corrupt officials or whatever. At the same time, it is not correct to blame 100% uh, the, the officials or politicians who indulge in corruption. We have to also address uh, the public on this issue. If every member of the public says that I will not indulge in corruption, anybody who, whom I found to be corrupt, I'll report about him to concern authorities, etc. So unless there is um, mass movement to fight against corruption in this country, I don't think it's possible. Even in this election, I know. People have been telling me that corruption is going on everywhere. People are throwing money like water. Candidates are, are indulging in all these uh, practices, visibly, even invisibly, or out, outwardly or covertly. But there is no mechanism to stop it or to confront with these corrupt people. In my constituency, this central constituency, my opponents, for example, are, are stinkingly rich. And they spray money in the slum areas and wherever they, they thought they could fool the people. 